Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Today, we're going to be talking about cutting the cord. Um, if you're not familiar with what that means, it's basically it means getting rid of your cable service and replacing it with either um, an, an antenna to get live TV or uh, one of the many streaming services available. So I'll be going over all of the different options that are out there today. Um, I'll be talking about different ways of getting live TV. I uh, will be talking about the different streaming platforms that are available, as well as how to get all of that streaming content on your TV screen. So does anyone have any questions before we get started? No. All right, great. Um, I'm gonna mute everyone. If you have a question, just unmute yourself and ask it at any time, or you can type it in the chat window as well, if you see that. So what are your options? Uh, basically, it boils down to two things. You can use an antenna or and or you can use a streaming service. So antennas, yes, they still work. No, the antenna you had 20 years ago will not work. So the old rabbit ears that you had probably back in the day, those don't work anymore. Um, the TVs that are broadcast are all in a digital format now. So you will need a digital antenna. I'll talk about some of those in a little bit. Um, there is a great website that I'm going to uh, share with you now. I'll post it in the chat. And if anyone's watching on the YouTube video, I'll post it in the comments. So this website that I just shared, I'm gonna share my screen so you can see what I'm looking at. This website is set up by the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. And it will give you a pretty good estimate of the channels that you can pick up with an antenna. So if you just type in your zip code here and click go, on the left-hand side here, this color coordinated little chart will tell you which channels are in the area and the approximate signal strength you'll receive. So anything typically in the green or yellow um, chart right here will be good enough to, to get a pretty stable connection. Um, that's gonna depend on a lot of factors. Uh, so you're with an antenna, um, there's a lot of, uh, of factors that can affect how good of a signal you can receive. So the height of the antenna, uh, environmental factors. So for instance, trees or bridges or buildings, those can all affect the signal strength. Um, so in an ideal situation, you'd have uh, your, your antenna maybe up on the roof or something unobstructed with no trees or anything blocking the signal and, and you'd pick up all of these channels. Again, that's an ideal situation. Obviously not everyone's gonna have that set up, but um, if you can pick up Mo odds are you'll pick up most of these channels with a, with a decent antenna if you live anywhere in Sayville. Um, and that's based off just the zip code that I, I entered in on this website. So if you wanna know what the channels are, that'll tell you right here in the network, it's the second column. So it looks like uh, UNIM, I'm not sure what that is, the WFTY, that's gonna come in very strong IND network, CBS, uh, looks like either Telemundo, ION, FX, PBS, those will all come in, those should come in pretty well. Um, and then it looks like, if I go down a little bit further, ABC, ETV, CW, oh, I think uni, uni is universal, so that's NBC, I think. So you should be getting all the major networks, PBS, um, Pretty good if you put up an antenna. Um, so there's a lot of different antennas out there. What you're going to want to purchase is a digital antenna. Um, they don't really make not digital antennas anymore because they don't do analog broadcast signals anymore. So that shouldn't be hard to find one. Um, you'll see most of them will be power. They require power, like they need to be plugged into a power outlet. Um, the other connection is an old coaxial cable, or just a regular cable that you probably have run all over your house right now that screws into the back of your TV. Um, 
antennas, you'll find a whole bunch of different ranges from 30 miles, 60 miles, 150 miles or more. Anything after 60 miles um, starts to have a, a, a reduction in return. So 60 miles is, is a good one to go with. Um, and again, it has to be a powered. It needs to be plugged into uh, to an outlet. And the, uh, the reason I say anything after 60 miles might not uh, get you much better results is because of all the environmental factors. So outside of 60 miles, you're gonna start running into trees and airports and cities and all kinds of things. Um, and even outside of 60 miles, you start, you know, hills and the curvature of the earth can even start to play uh, a factor. So uh, the a rule of thumb is to get a, a good 60 mile antenna. Uh, outdoor is better than indoor. And that's simply because there are fewer obstacles. If, if you put an antenna outdoors, then there are indoors. So you don't have to go through your kitchen to get a good signal. It can just be outside on your roof or on a flagpole or something. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of antennas out there. If you do a quick search on Amazon or Best Buy or Walmart, I'm sure you'll find dozens and dozens of antennas. Um, it's not a particularly um, you know, advanced technology. So you'll get a, there isn't um, you know, standout brands I'd say that are, that are head and shoulders above the rest, but the most popular brands out there right now, and I guess the most reliable are Antennas Direct. Another brand is called Mohu, M-O-H-U, WineGuard, and Channel Master. Those are the top four companies right now. So if you want to stick with something you know is going to be reliable, I would try one of those four brands first. Um, and I'm pretty sure Mohu is actually purchased recently by Antennas Direct. So Antennas Direct is kind of be, becoming a monopoly in the uh, antenna industry. So uh, any of those brand, brands, I'd say pretty reliable. Good luck with them. Um, and on this website, again, it will tell you approximately um, the distance away as well. So that will give you a good idea. I believe everything in the green is within 30 miles and everything in the yellow is within 60. So if you get a um, 60 mile antenna, you should pick up everything in green and yellow, like I was saying. Uh, ABC as well, I didn't mention that earlier. So all the major networks you should be picking up on an antenna. Okay, any questions about antennas? Oh, I didn't talk about the price. You can find uh, an antenna, a decent antenna for about $50 if you look around online. I'm pretty sure Amazon has a Mohu or an Antennas Direct indoor powered digital antenna for around $50. You might even find them for less. Um, I know Amazon sells their own brand of antennas. I, I've never used them personally, so I don't know the quality, but I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're fine. So, Antennas are pretty easy to set up. Um, like I said, they all need power, so they need to be plugged in. And then you would screw the coaxial cable in the back of your TV and then run a channel scan on your TV. And then your TV will go through every channel it can find, and then it will save any channel that gets a good signal. Um, the cable to connect the antenna to your TV can be almost as long as you want. I'd say anything after about 100 feet, you're gonna to start to lose some of the signal strength, but um, you can pretty much have the antenna anywhere, you know, in the room or maybe an adjacent room and then wire it up to your TV. It doesn't need, necessarily need to be right next to your TV. All right, that's pretty much it for, uh, for antennas. Does anyone have any, any questions before I move on? Okay, so now we're gonna get into the uh, more complicated stuff, um, streaming services, which I'm sure most of you came here with questions about. So when you go with streaming services, you still need an internet connection, which means you're still gonna have to be doing business with the cable companies. Now, I'm sure most of you are um, doing business with the cable companies right now and you're in some kind of bundle 
um, you're going to want to get out of that. So at minimum, if you're going to be a, a cable cutter, a cord cutter, you're going to need an internet only package. And those range in price um, from, I've seen them as low as $20 a month. Um, and then depending on what internet speed you get, you're paying for, or the cable company you're going with, they can go, you know, up to $100 or more. But um, I, every cable company, whether you have Optimum or Verizon, uh, they have internet only packages. And that's what you're going to want to get if you're going to be doing any of these streaming services and you want to keep your bill the lowest it can possibly be. So when you go to tell your cable company that you want to, you know, lower your package or get rid of your package altogether and switch to an internet only plan, you're going to get some resistance. And this is the hardest part about cutting the cord. I tell this every time I run this class, the hardest part about any of the things I'm going to talk about today is haggling with these cable companies. They're going to want to keep you as a subscriber. So they don't want to lose you as a customer, but they want to obviously get the most money out of you possible. So um, the nice thing about living in an area where there are multiple cable companies is you can you know, use one against the other to try to fight for your, um, for your money. So um, I, what I recommend doing is if say you have Optimum and they're saying, you know, we can't go any lower than this, or, or we're not going to get you out of a bundle, say, well, Verizon is offering a $20 a month for internet. I'm going to just go with them. And then if you have to say, you know, set a date to end your plan, set a termination date for the end of the month. And then after that's confirmed, hang up the phone and without fail, you will get a call back from Optimum or whoever you're canceling with within a few days from a retention specialist whose job it is to not let you leave, to keep you as a customer. And then they will generally be much more flexible with um, setting up a plan that works for you. So again, this is the hardest part and it's gonna be different for all of you. All I can really say is be firm, don't budge, tell them exactly what you want. And when I'll tell you what you need in this class uh, and don't back down. I mean, you have the power. There are other cable companies you can go with. Um, I know people, I've spoken with people from doing this class for years now who will bounce back and forth between Verizon and Optimum every two years. Whenever their bundle package ends, they'll just go to the other one and start a new deal with the other company and just go back and forth. Um, a little inconvenient but you can do that no they're not going to say no we don't want your money anymore they'll never turn you away they're always going to want to keep you so that's another tool in your chest um, so what kind of internet package do you need typically and this is a, just a general rule of thumb i recommend getting at least 15 megabytes of speed per device you will be streaming from so if you only have one device 15 gigabytes is adequate. Um, you can round that up to 20. So we'll say 20 megabytes per device. If you're going to be streaming it from five TVs all at the same time, all around your house, you're going to want 100 megabytes speed. So that's just a quick ratio for every one streaming device. Give yourself about 20 megabytes to get a, a consistent stream. Um, so obviously the more, the better. Um, I, like I said, I think packages start at around 20 megabytes. So if you're only using one TV and your TV's right next to wherever your internet router is located, um, that minimum package of 20 megabytes is, might be okay. Might be good. Um, again, streaming devices. Those are tablets, those are your phones. Anything that's accessing the internet is gonna be eating into that, that speed. So if you're watching Netflix on your TV and then you pull out your iPad and you start going on Facebook, both of those devices are now competing or eating up all that, that, uh, that bandwidth. So the more the better. If you're unsure and say you only have one TV in the house but you do have other devices like computers and laptops, 
I'd say maybe go for like a 50 megabyte plan. Um, let me see if I can pull up optimums. If you have any questions, you can ask now. I'm just looking up the prices just so you have an idea. It looks like this, this makes sense. This is what it was the last time I checked. So Optimum has a 300 megabyte plan, which looks like their lowest plan, at least what they're advertising for $40 a month. So 300 megabytes is very fast. I mean, that's even that their lowest plan they're advertising at 300 megabytes is gonna be plenty fast for most of you. Um, then they have the next is up next plan up is 500 then a gigabyte which is a thousand um if you are an optimum customer and you call them up on the phone and you say i want to go an internet only plan they'll probably only offer you these three plans initially but if again if you keep talking to them and say i don't need something that high i just i need only want 50 they may have plans they just aren't you know, advertising to the public that they are still able to uh, to offer you. So again, chat with the retention specialist or whoever, the salesperson and, you know, be persistent, say, I only want 50, I only want 50 or a hundred, I only want a hundred. And they'll, odds are they will meet you, they'll meet your demands. Um, I think last time I checked Verizon is comparable to this. I think it was either 35 or 45, it wasn't exactly 40, but it's it's very close, it's very comparable. Verizon and Optimum, the prices are gonna be very competitive. Again, expect around $40 a month for 300. I believe they have a $20 a month plan that's around 50. It could be even be slightly more or less, but that's the starting packages that you can, that's the price range you can expect to pay which I'm sure is much lower than your cable bills are now. So we're already off to a good start. But again, if you aren't interested in any of these streaming services like Netflix or any of this stuff, and you just want the basic um, cable channels like NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, you can get an antenna and be done with your monthly payments forever. So everything I'm going on Everything I'll be discussing going on will be assuming that you'll be having at least one of, one of these internet packages. Oh, I should say, sorry. The other way you can save some money is with these cable companies, you're paying a monthly rental fee for their router and modem. You don't need to rent a router or modem from a cable company. They're not going to, they're always going to try to push their equipment on you because they get money every month from you renting their equipment. You don't need to do this. So in order to have internet in your house, you need two devices, a modem and a router. A modem takes that raw signal from the poles and converts it into basically for, I'm really dumbing this down, but it takes it and converts it into internet, something a computer can read. And then your router gives you Wi-Fi and allows multiple devices to connect to the internet. So those two devices you need to do any streaming services or just have internet in your house at all. Now, Optimum and Verizon may have combo units where it's a modem and a router together in one. Um, I know the, I think it's Optimum, the Altice, I think is what it's called. You've probably seen commercials on TV what that is a modem and a router in one unit. So sometimes these terms can get conflated and that sometimes they can even be in the same box. But what you need to know is that if you don't have your own modem and router, the cable company is gonna make you rent theirs for an exorbitant, not an exorbitant, but for a price that doesn't make sense if you're gonna be holding on to the service for more than a year. Now, I said you can buy your own modem and router. You can. Uh, the most modern mod uh, modem you can buy right now is called a Doxis 3. You can buy one online. Um, I believe they're around $100 if you look on Amazon. So it's D-O-C, 
SIS3, DOCSIS. And it looks like they go from anywhere from 60 to $100 or so. So this modem, it's a one-time purchase. Um, and basically you just plug it into power, plug in the cable that comes out of your wall into that. And it basically, it does the rest for you. Um, now, Optimum or Verizon may be charging you $10 a month to rent a modem from them. Um, so you can see that only after half a year or so, it already pays for itself. So, and anything after that, you're saving money. So this is one way you can eliminate another payment that you're making every month to this company. This is a way to lower your bill. This brand right here, the Aris, this is the one I, I have at my own house. So this is like, when I bought it, it was the best I could buy. And it's, you know, $111. I've had it for probably three or four years now. So it's paid for itself four times over. Um, so, and it works great. It's still up to date. It still works fantastic. Now, routers, there is a thousand routers out there made by every company from Apple to Amazon to every company you can imagine makes routers and they're in all different qualities and makes and some are going to be overkill and some are going to be um, not uh, to your to your needs. So there are some good brands out there. Linksys is a very popular one. Netgear is another really popular one. Um, I recommend going on um, like a website like CNET or um, Consumer Reports and trying to find, you know, best affordable or, or best budget routers. And I'm sure it'll be, you'll find one that's get five star rating for under $50. Um, so again, it's a one-time purchase and that'll save you paying Optimum or Verizon $10 a month to rent one of theirs. So modem and router, buy them and keep them for years. It'll save you that monthly fee. One last thing I wanted to mention about the internet speeds. Um, if you have a smartphone, you can actually run an internet speed on your phone and you can kind of move around your house and see what kind of speeds you're getting right now around your house. Um, I just went on speedtest.net, but you can just do a Google search on your phone, you know, internet speed test, and uh, you'll get a bunch of different websites that do this. I think Google actually has this function built into it now, but basically you just hit it click go, give it a minute and it will test what your download speed is wherever you are. So I recommend, you know, doing this on your phone or a laptop, going to exactly where you're going to be streaming from. So if you're going to be streaming on your TV, go exactly where your TV is located, run the speed test and this download speed I'm at the library right now and we have excellent internet. So you can see I'm getting about 309 megabytes, which is great, which is excellent. That's way more than we need. Um, so again, run a speed test, figure out exactly what speed you're getting. And with that in mind, remember, you're gonna need at least say 20 megabytes or so to, to st start streaming. So that's one thing you're gonna to wanna to play around with a little bit. Okay. So now we've covered internet, we've covered the router, the modem, the things, the essentials that you need. Let's start talking about some of the more fun stuff. So how do you get all of this fun, exciting content on your TV? Well, there's two ways. You can do it by either having a smart TV or you can do it by buying a streaming device, which will turn your TV smart or make it smarter. Um, and what I mean by smart is it allows your TV to connect to the internet and access apps like Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime, all those different streaming apps. So if you have an older TV that isn't smart or maybe it was smart and then it lost some of its functionality over the years, um, you're gonna wanna buy a streaming device. And what that streaming device again will do is it will basically bring all those apps and streaming services all into one place where you can access them and, and view them on your TV. There's a lot of different options out there. I'm gonna go over 
the most popular ones and the ones that I think are the best right now. Um, so let me close this window. I'm going to share a new window with you. So the first you've probably seen before, it is the Amazon Fire Stick. Um, if you've ever been on Amazon's website, I'm sure you've seen advertisements for it all over the place. They generally go on sale for deep discounts on Black Friday or around the holidays. Um, this is probably the most popular streaming device out there just by the fact that it's Amazon selling it and everyone, most, a lot of people use Amazon to purchase things online. So this might be the first one they see. Um, so Amazon has a few different fire sticks available. Um, the light version is $30. Again, these usually all go on sale around the holidays. So if you're waiting uh, to buy one, maybe at like a summer sale or something, this you can probably cut these prices in half and that's what it will come out to. <clears throat> so they have the basic for $30. They have an upgraded one that will run slightly faster and will do uh, 4K and, and higher resolutions for a little bit more. I think, they're, I think it's around 50. Um, again, it's, it's very functional. It's one of the least expensive out there just because it's Amazon and they're flooding the market with them. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of the Fire Stick. I find it a little bit clunky and a little awkward to use, and it's not quite as fast as some of the other ones I'm going to show you. But if you're looking for one that's, you know, reliable, solid, and um, will give you some longevity for a decent price, the Fire Stick is not a bad one to go with. Um, and if you're familiar, if you use Alexa devices in your house, um, the, this Amazon Fire Stick will sync up with those as well. So that's another nice feature. Okay. The next one is a Roku. You might have heard of Roku. They've been around for a long, long time. They were one of the pioneers of this whole streaming devices uh, movement. Um, they have a few different options available. They have an Express model, which is basically their equivalent to the Fire Stick Lite. It's, uh, it's simple, it's compact, it does all the basic functions you'll need. I believe it's $30, yep, $30. And then they have an updated version called the Premiere for $35, $5 more that gets you 4K streaming, so a higher resolution. Um, I think that's the only difference actually, an HDR color. So you get a bigger, higher color spectrum that's only going to apply if you have a 4K HDR TV. Otherwise, the Express is going to work just fine for you. Um, and then lastly, they have the Roku Streaming Stick Plus, which probably, I think it has just a faster processor. So it'll just run a little bit quicker. Um, and that's $5 more for $40. So all of those are very affordable. Um, Roku, like I said, has been in the game for a long time. I like their interface. It works really well. Everything's pretty snappy and intuitive and it's compatible with virtually every, if not every streaming service out there. So Roku is definitely a good bet. All right. Next up is the Apple TV. You may have heard of this. If you're an Apple fan and you use Apple devices like an iPhone, an iPad, and you use their ecosystem for downloading music and movies and shows, uh, the Apple TV is going to work great for you because it takes all of your Apple information and syncs it all together with the Apple TV. Um, it's more expensive than any other of the devices. And, you know, it's Apple. It's got to charge a surplus for the, the Apple logo. But um, it's, has, it's one of the fastest, so it's nice and snappy. It has a nice remote. It's compatible with a lot of apps, um, not the most, but close to, to the most. Um, and again, if, if you're a, I would recommend this if you're an Apple enthusiast, if you have an iPhone and you're really integrated with the Apple environment and iCloud and all that stuff, I would recommend getting the Apple TV um, just because it's gonna sync up with all your Apple stuff and it's gonna make everything nice and easy to share. Um, you can share your screen from your iPad to the Apple TV so you can see it up on your TV. Um, 
So all of those things make it nice and, and work well with what you're already familiar with. So if you're an Apple enthusiast, I recommend getting the, uh, the Apple TV. And another nice feature of the Apple TV is it comes with one year of their streaming service for free. It's called Apple TV Plus. So Apple TV Plus, it's, it's one of the newer streaming services out there, but it has some pretty good content. Um, there's a show called Ted Lasso that's very popular right now. Um, Tom Hanks just had a movie called Greyhound that came out last year. That's exclusive to Apple TV Plus. So it's, it's new, so it doesn't have tons of content, but it's slowly starting to, uh, to build up now. So you get a free year of it, so that's nice. Okay, and the last one I'm going to share is called the Chromecast. So there's two versions, the Chromecast with Google TV and just the regular Chromecast. Uh, the Chromecast with Google TV came out just a few weeks or a month ago. So it's the newest addition to all of these. Um, if you are an Android user or you use Google products, just like the Apple TV syncs with Apple products, this will work with your products really well. Um, if you use like a Google Assistant in your home, for instance, or you have an Android phone, um, those will sync up nicely. So this is kind of the Apple TV equivalent for Google. Um, another nice feature of the Google Chromecast with TV is its interface takes all of the streaming services that you are signed up with and um, melds them all together into one feed. So you don't have to bounce in between a bunch of different apps to see you know, what's, what's an Amazon Prime and then what's a Netflix and what's an HBO. It, combines all the content and everything you're signed up with into one um, into one page. So it makes browsing a little bit easier. Um, and that's $50. So if I was going to buy one today, I would get the Chromecast with Google TV just because I like that feature and I'm pretty integrated with Google products. So that would work best for me. Again, all of these are, are interchangeable. So if you prefer one over the other, they're all work perfectly fine. Um, and the regular Chromecast for $30 works differently than anything else. Um, basically what the regular Chromecast does is it allows you to send a feed, a video feed from say your phone or a computer or a laptop or a tablet and send that to the Chromecast, which is plugged into your TV. So for instance, if you want to, if you're watching a YouTube video on your phone or a, a tablet or something, you can send that video to your TV via the Chromecast, as opposed to um, opening YouTube on your TV and then finding it that way. So if you like navigating all these apps on your phone or a tablet or your computer, as opposed to using like a TV remote to find apps, the Chromecast might be a great option for you. Um, because it, you do everything on that device that you're already familiar with and then just send that signal to the TV at the last step. So I just wanted to throw that option out there as well. Any questions about streaming services, any, any of these streaming devices? If there are no questions, I'm gonna move on to the fun stuff, get all this technology behind us and now we can start talking about all the different ways we can watch content. So I should say there are many apps out there that do require a monthly subscription like Netflix and Amazon and, and some of the popular ones like you've, I'm sure you've heard of, but there are a lot of free options out there. Um, namely the two that I should mention right at the top, you get for free with your library card. So just by the nature of having a library card, you get access to two streaming services one is called Canopy, the other is called Hoopla. And if you come into the library, we have brochures on both of them, you can learn all about them. But basically they both have movies and shows and documentaries that you can watch all for free. You sign in with your library card once and you're done. Um, you can also, if you, uh, you can also access them on a, um, a smartphone or a tablet or a computer. If you want to go on a watch them on a computer, you can go to our website, which is where I am now. 
And if you go under, let's see, I believe it's under um, books, movies, and more. Uh, movies and music here. Yep. Okay. So you'll see Canopy and Hoopla. So you can visit their websites by using these links. I'll click on Canopy just to show you. Um, so you're just going to click add a library card. You'll enter your number and you'll be signed in. And you'll see hundreds and hundreds of movies that you can stream all right there for free. Same thing with, with uh, Hoopla. You just sign in with your library card and you get access to tons and tons of movies, TV shows, documentaries, all kinds of great stuff. So both of those are free. So you should definitely sign up for both of those because there's one. Oh, and by the way, so Canopy and Hoopla, they both have apps that you can download. So you can download those apps on your smartphone or your tablet and view from the app. Uh, if you want to access them on your TV, you need to do the same thing, download the app on whatever device you're using. So for instance, if you're using um, um, Apple TV, you just search for Canopy or Hoopla in the App Store, download the app and sign in, and then you can start browsing. So the next one I want to share is called Peacock. You might have seen it advertised on, on TV. Peacock is owned by NBC. Um, it's free to use and you get access to, I think most, if not all of NBC's catalog of shows. Um, the drawback is there are commercials. So many of the, the free streaming services uh, are free with commercials. So Peacock is one of them. Um, you can pay an additional $5 a month to get rid of the ads. But if you are used to watching ads just from watching cable for years, um, it's totally free to watch just as it is. So Peacock is a really great option. If you like NBC content like The Office or Parks and Recreation or um, any of their shows, I think Downton Abbey's on it as well. So that's a great uh, option right there for you. The next one is called Crackle. So Crackle, just like Peacock, it gives you tons of, of shows. Um, Crackle is owned by Sony. So in addition to all the TV content they have, they also have Sony movies. Again, uh, it's all free with commercials. So every 15 minutes or so, you'll get a commercial, and but then you'll be able to keep watching for free. Um, so Crackle is a great option. And um, again, any of these that I'm going over right now, you just download the app and sign in the same way you would any of the other apps. So that's Crackle. Another one is called Pluto TV. So Pluto works just like Crackle. Um, except it, uh, it, it does have some live TV as well. Um, but there are commercials again, that's what makes it free. Um, but, uh, it's another great option and, uh, they do have some movies, but not quite as much as the other, um, some of the other, um, services. Okay. I'm going to move on cause I got a lot to cover. So that was Pluto. We have two B two U T U B I. Again, it's free. There are commercials. That's what makes it free. But it gives you access to tons of shows and movies. Uh, Tubi is owned by Fox. So you get a lot of Fox programming and Fox, um, 20th Century Fox movies. Um, so that's, that's what that has. Um, and lastly, uh, I wanted to mention YouTube. So there's nearly infinite content on YouTube. YouTube is an app, it's on everything. It's on every smart TV and streaming device. Um, you can start watching some user created content that way. So I just, it seems obvious, but YouTube, it's another great option for, uh, for watching things. And now YouTube has started incorporating movies as well. So 
you can watch certain movies on YouTube with commercials. Okay, so those are some of the free streaming services out there. Now, um, there are ways of watching live TV through the internet. Um, I showed Pluto, that's one free with commercials, but um, Pluto has very limited channels and you're gonna get a lot of commercials. So I wanted to uh, share with you some of the, um, if you do still want is like all the channels that you had with your cable subscription, there are a lot of options out there for getting a similar service, but through the internet. And generally, if not always, that price will be much lower than if you were going through the cable company. So I'll go over a few of those options now, unless anyone has any questions, you can just shoot it into the chat. So the, the first one and probably the most popular is Hulu with live TV. So you might've heard of Hulu. They have their, they used to be just an ex, a streaming only service where they had, um, you know, content you could watch just like Netflix. Uh, but now in the past few years, they've started working into live television as well that you stream through the internet. Um, you get 65 channels that you can stream live um, if for $65 a month. And with that, you also get access to Hulu's exclusive content as well. So for instance, uh, Hulu makes the Handmaid's Tale, the television show, um, and a bunch of other shows like uh, Little Fires Everywhere, uh, Mrs. America, Palm Springs was a, a movie that came out last year that was uh, very popular. So all that's exclusive to Hulu. So you get all of that content in 65 channels uh, with Hulu with live TV. Now, I, I should mention, I, I made a, a nice chart that I will share with you now. Um, I'm adding it into the chat. So this chart that I'm sharing with you, I don't know, can you, oh, here we go. Okay, I just added it to the chat now. So I just created a document that lists all of the, uh, the different streaming services that I'm gonna go over that offer live television. And it will tell you exactly what channels are offered with each service. So if there's a particular channel in mind that you absolutely can't live without, use this chart, see which of these services offer it, and then you can base your decision off that. Okay, so Hulu is a, is a very, very popular one. It's $65 a month and you get roughly 65, maybe slightly more channels. Uh, next up is YouTube TV. So this is a streaming service made by Google. Um, it's $65 a month, same as Hulu. You get 80, 85 channels. So you get a little bit, a few more channels. Um, you don't get any exclusive content really. Uh, so Hulu has their own shows and movies they make. YouTube TV hasn't really dipped into that yet. It's they're, they've sort of started, but not, not, there's nothing really noteworthy yet. Um, but a nice feature is you get unlimited DVR with YouTube TV. So you can record an unlimited amount of shows and watch later. Uh, and you can be logged into six um, devices simultaneously. So that's another nice feature of YouTube TV. So again, YouTube TV is 85 channels for $65 a month. Now Sling, Sling wasn't one of the first companies to start introducing live TV over the internet. They have two packages, an orange and a blue package. Um, I've detailed them both in that document as well. So um, I think if you go with either package, it's $35 or you can get both for $50 a month. Um, and they give you um, between 30 and 50 channels, depending on which package or both packages you're going with. Um, Sling is one of the, the least expensive of the live TV streaming options. Um, but the, again, the channels are slightly more limited, but um, they do have most of the major networks there. So when I say one streaming service has more channels than, than another, it doesn't necessarily mean they're all going to be like top of the line major network channels. 
the same as with your cable subscription. You might, you might get 500 channels, but there's only 30 or 40 of them you'd ever really watch. So just keep that in mind. Um, one nice thing I, I wanna mention about Sling is they generally, if not always offer some kind of bundle when you subscribe. So you'll get, um, they usually throw in like a free antenna or a free streaming device when you sign up. So um, I've seen them offer a free 60 mile digital antenna. I've also seen them offer a free Roku stick just for signing up. So if you don't already have a streaming stick or you don't have an antenna, this might be a great option for you to get started because they'll, they'll give you one for free. And in any of these um, streaming devices, uh, services rather, you can quit at any time. So if you, you sling for a month and you say, I don't really like this. I want to try Hulu. You can just cancel your sling and go to Hulu. It's not like a cable subscription where you're tied down for two years or something. It's, it's all month to month. So that's a nice, nice thing about streaming. So those are the, the major ones. These are the most popular ones, Hulu, YouTube, and sling. Um, there have been some newcomers into the, the game recently. Uh, one is called Philo and the other is called Fubo. So I'll go over both of them. So Philo, P-H-I-L-O, uh, it's the least expensive of all of the streaming services out there uh, for live TV. You get 60 channels, you get a 30 day DVR. Um, you can watch it on three televisions at the same time. So it, it lets you stream on three separate devices. Um, the, the channels themselves are slightly more limited than some of the other platforms out there, but again, it has a lot of the major networks um, and some, some more uh, like cable networks. Um, but again, it's, it's $20 a month. So it's the least expensive of all of the options. So if all you wanna watch is Hallmark and, and Comedy Central, this has both of those. So this will be perfect for you. Uh, so that, that's Philo. And last is Fubo. I know all these words start to blend together. They're all ridiculous. But Fubo came out, uh, I believe, in Europe and then made its way to the US. Uh, Fubo's, I get the biggest benefit of Fubo is they have the most sports channels of any of the other uh, streaming platforms. So if you're a sports nut and you need like, five soccer channels and three football channels and two golf channels and all of these stuff, all the ESPNs, like one through whatever, eight and college and all that stuff, Fubo has all of it. Um, it's one of the more expensive, if not the ex most expensive, it's um, between $65 and $80 a month. Um, and But you get between 114 and 196 channels. So they have by far the most channels, but they're also one of the more expensive ones. So if you need as many channels as you possibly can get with all every single sports channel, this is definitely the package for you, uh, Fubo. Um, so I, again, you can try any of these out. If you aren't happy with one, you can cancel it, move to another. Um, that's the, one of the great things about you. There's no, you know, you're not tied down to a contract. All of these services have add-ons as well. So if you're interested in HBO or Showtime or any of those premium cable channels, you can tack those on to your monthly bill as well. And those all have, they have different prices depending on which um, company you're going with. But I know if, Generally, like Showtime's an additional $10 a month, HBO's an additional $15 a month. So you can start to kind of customize these packages um, when you start to look into them. Okay, any questions about live TV streaming? If, uh, if you are really considering this, definitely check out that document I shared in the chat. If you're having trouble accessing it, just let me know, I'll email it to you. Um, and I'll figure out a way to put it in the, um, the chat of the YouTube channel as well. Hi, Alex, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, I, can, I can't see that in the chat, number one. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so that would be great if you could post it someplace else. Yep, I'll um, email it to you. When, and, and just one other question. So we have an Amazon, we have the Amazon Prime stick. Yep. Okay, the Fire Stick. It, would you use that with like a Roco? Like, would you get more than one stick or just one is, is sufficient? You will need one per TV. Okay. You don't need to have both a Roku and a Fire Stick hooked up to the same TV. Uh, okay. Because they're gonna be, there's so much overlap. There, there's really no benefit of doing that. Um, the only instance I can think of where you, you might do that is if um, there was an app that was only available on Amazon, not available on Roku. Okay. Uh, but I can't even think of a, an app that that would even apply to. Like, oh. they're both so popular, Roku and Amazon, that all of the major streaming platforms are going to be available on both of them. Uh, so yeah, to, to answer your question, um, no, you would just have one or the other. Okay, thanks so or, much. Yeah, you're welcome. But if you have a smart TV, you might not need either. So again, these, right. these devices are just adding the smart functionality to a TV um, or making it smarter if your smart TV's older and can't support some of these newer apps. Okay. Uh, I hope that, hope that answers your question. Yes, that did. Thank you okay. so much. You're welcome. Um, so I should mention, if, if you do want live TV and you want to go with one of these apps, it's going to work very, it's going to be very similar to what you're used to already using a cable box. So you open up the app, you're going to hit a guide button and it's going to show you a TV guide that looks almost identical to the, the guide you see through Optimum or Verizon. Um, so it's not like you're going to be bouncing around between the BBC app and the ESPN app and the Adult Swim app and the TBS app. It's going to show you a live listing of, of TV shows the same as it does on your cable guide. So just wanted to clarify that if you had any questions about that. Um, one other nice benefit of going with one of these streaming platforms over um, uh, like a traditional live TV through cable is you can access them from a computer or a tablet as well. You don't have to be watching them on your TV. So for instance, if I had YouTube TV, uh, if I was a subscriber to YouTube TV, I can log in to YouTube TV from anywhere that has internet in the world, practically, log in into my account and be able to watch live TV. So you don't have to be rooted at your home. I could be at the library or in the library parking lot. As long as I had internet, I could pull up my YouTube TV app on my phone and start watching live TV. Same goes for Sling, Hulu, Philo, all, it's all the same. It's all works off the internet. So anything that can connect to the internet that can download the app, you can watch live TV. So that's another nice benefit. And a lot of these will allow you to stream on multiple devices at the same time. So if you wanna watch Hallmark on your TV and your husband wants to watch ESPN on his laptop or on his iPad, he can do that and you can do that, you know, at the same time with one subscription. You don't have to pay another 30 or 40 or $50 a month to watch it on another screen. So that's another way that you save money streaming as opposed to going with the cable company. Um, so I'm just going to go over some of the, the popular streaming services that are out there and um, feel free to, to interrupt or if you have any questions. So first up, let me just close some of these windows. Netflix, I'm sure you've heard of it. They were one of the first people, first companies in this the streaming game. They have an enormous catalog now of original content. Um, the Crown, Stranger Things, Ozark, Narcos, The Queen's Gambit, Bridgerton, Grace and Frankie, Dead to Me. These are all exclusive shows to Netflix and hundreds more. Um, so if you wanna watch any of those, you're gonna to have to get Netflix. Um, Netflix is $14 a month. Their price has gone up a little bit over the years, but right now it's $14 a month. You get access to all of their original content, which again is hundreds, if not thousands at this point of original shows and movies. Um, 
if you're a, an absolute movie buff or um, and you need to watch all the Oscar nominated films every year, um, over the past few years, more and more Best Picture nominees have been Netflix exclusives. So for instance, last year, The Irishman, that was a Netflix exclu exclusive. If you wanted to watch the, the new Martin Scorsese movie, you had to have Netflix. Um, this year, The Trial of Chicago 7 and Mank are both Netflix exclusives. Um, I think there might even be a few more, but um, yeah. So, and the, yeah, I think two years before that, Marriage Story and Roma, those were Netflix exclusives. They were both nominated for Best Picture. Um, so Netflix is, is really upping their game and, and making some very good content. So if, if I was to choose one streaming service to go with Netflix, they're still, they're still the king right now. All right, Amazon Prime. If you already have an Amazon Prime account for like two free two day shipping, you get access to their streaming service for free. Or I shouldn't say free, it's part of your Amazon Prime subscription. So Amazon Prime, it's called Amazon Prime Video now, just to distinguish it from their shipping service. So Amazon Prime Video, uh, they're not gonna give me any preview here, but it's similar to Netflix. They have their own shows and movies that they come out with. Um, their most popular show, I believe, is The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel that wins a bunch of Emmys every year. It's a great show. That's a Amazon Prime exclusive. Um, this year, they had a great show come out called uh, Small Axe. That was a really fantastic miniseries that won a bunch of Emmys and BAFTAs. Um, let's see, One Night in Miami and Sound of Metal were both movies that came out this year. Both of those are Amazon Prime exclusives. They are both um, nominated for a bunch of Oscars. And, uh, and yeah, you can only watch them on Amazon Prime. Uh, so Amazon, Amazon Prime is $120 a year or $10 a month. So if you're, but again, if you're already using Amazon Prime for free shipping and everything, you will have Amazon Prime video already. So download the app, you already have access to it. Uh, next up is HBO uh, and their app is called HBO Max. So HBO has been doing streaming for a while, um, but this year they've basically bundled all of their apps and content into one app called HBO Max. It's $15 a month. It gives you access to every HBO show or movie that's ever come out or comedy special. Uh, and they have a deal with Warner Brothers where any film Warner Brothers film that comes out in theaters comes out on HBO Max the same day and is available to watch for free. So that's no other streaming service is doing this as far as I'm aware. Um, and if I had to make a prediction, I'd say this is the future. I, will, I wouldn't be surprised if, if other streaming services started doing this. Um, so every month or every few weeks, it seems like there's a new movie that comes out in theaters that is also available to watch for free on HBO Max. So this week it was the new Godzilla versus King Kong movie, um, but um, the new Space Jam movie, the new Matrix movie, uh, the new In the Heights movie, which is made by um, Lin-Manuel Miranda who did Hamilton, his movie's coming out in June. All of these are going to be released on HBO Max the same day as they are in the theaters. So that's a huge thing that's going for HBO Max right now. And if you're a big Game of Thrones fan or one of the other HBO shows, Sopranos or something, Sex in the City, HBO Max is a no brainer. You, you get access to all of those as well. All right. Um, I talked about Hulu already a little bit with their live TV, but if you aren't interested in getting live TV, you can just get regular plain old Hulu. It starts at $6 a month and that gives you access to all of their exclusive content. I talked about uh, The Handmaid's Tale. It's a very popular show, wins a bunch of Emmys. That's exclusive to Hulu. Um, trying to think what else. Little Fires Everywhere, uh, Mrs. America. They had a Hillary Clinton documentary that came out uh, last year. That was very popular. All of that 
you get access to with uh, with Hulu. Okay, Disney Plus. You might have heard of Disney Plus if you're a Star Wars fan or a Marvel fan because Disney just bought Star Wars and Marvel and all of the Star Wars movies, all of the Marvel movies are now on Disney Plus along with every Disney movie. So if you have kids or you're a Star Wars nerd or a Marvel movie nerd, this is basically mandatory. You have to get Disney Plus now because it has all of that along with all of their new content they're creating, their new shows. So The Mandalorian was an absurdly popular show that came out last year and is still going. The Star Wars TV show, that's exclusive to Disney Plus. So Disney is pretty straightforward. You know what Disney is. They own Pixar, they own Star Wars, they own Marvel. It's uh, $8 a month, I believe, Eight, $7 a month. So that's that. Very, very popular right now. They'll be making a big splash in the streaming world soon. It, they already have, and I'm sure they're only gonna grow. All right, I talked about Apple TV already. That's $5 a month. Um, they, uh, you, and I, again, you get a free trial for one year when you purchase a new Apple product. And so if you get a new phone or something, you get one year for free to try it out. Um, they don't have a lot of content right now, but the stuff they do have is, is pretty good. Um, like I, I mentioned, Greyhound, the Tom Hanks movie, um, Ted Lasso, it's a funny comedy show that's been very popular. Uh, they have an animated film that came out this year called Wolf Walkers that's nominated for best picture, best animated film rather. That was very good. Um, so yeah, that's Apple's streaming service. Again, it's $5 a month. Um, Paramount Plus, I'm sure you've seen commercials for it. It's, it's a new streaming service that's started by Viacom and CBS. Um, it's $6 a month and it has all of the CBS shows and content along with, uh, with Viacom content. So you get all the CBS shows, CBS Sports, BET, Comedy Central, Nickelodeon, MTV, all of that content along with uh, Paramount Films. And Paramount has their own exclusive content. So the biggest stuff right now is Star Trek shows. So there's two Star Trek shows that are exclusive to Paramount Plus. Uh, they also have a SpongeBob movie coming out um, and a Rugrats new, like the cartoon show Rugrats that's coming out later this year. So they have a lot of exclusive content already and they just launched. So I'm sure they'll be growing in the future as well. And that's $6 a month. Um, just a couple quick more Showtime is similar to, uh, to HBO. You get access to all of the Showtime uh, shows at $11 a month. If you're a big fan of Hallmark movies, like my wife is, there is a streaming service called Friendly TV. It's F-R-N-D-L-Y TV. It's $8 a month and it gives you access to uh, Hallmark movies, Hallmark mysteries and Hallmark, whatever their third channel is. So you get all the Hallmark channels uh, and a few other ones for $8. And last but not least, if you're a big fan of uh, British, the BBC shows or shows in the UK, Ireland, Scotland, um, or shows in New Zealand or Australia, there are a couple options for you. Um, Acorn TV, A-C-O-R-N TV, Acorn TV. It's been around for years. It has, um, it has TV shows and movies from uh, the UK, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand, and tons of original programming. Uh, they've been around for many, many years, so they have tons of uh, content at $6 a month. And then there's a, uh, a new streaming service that came out a couple of years ago called BritBox, um, which is exclusively British-only TV shows and movies. So they have a wider offering of British TV shows and movies than Acorn, but they don't have content from other uh, UK countries or Australia or New Zealand, but uh, they're they've been steadily growing since they've come out. And that's so you're probably wondering at this point. I just listed off about 
almost a dozen different streaming services, all those prices start to add up and you're getting kind of close to what your original cable bill was. Um, it's actually not the case. I've, I've crunched all the numbers and if you subscribe to everything, you're still well under, I'm sure what your average cable bill is, at least for me. So the beauty of, of all these streaming services is you really can pick and choose what you want. So you can, you can really make your, your media meal however you like. You don't, it's, it's not like a cable company where if you want, you know, uh, CNN or something, they're gonna bundle, you can only get it if you also subscribe to these 30 other channels and then they charge you another 60 or $70. That's not really how it works with streaming. Everything's kind of diced up into a little bit finer bits. So you can really pick and choose and find out exactly the package that works best for you. And if, if you do the work and look at that chart I shared with you and, and you know, kind of pick and choose this meal and get everything set up, you'll be, you'll be saving yourself hundreds if not thousands of dollars. So um, it's, it works. I personally have been doing it for years and I have not missed paying for cable at all.